If you're in the market for a mid-size luxury EV with third row seating, there's not a whole lot of choices out there, but luckily the Model X is probably, in my opinion, one of the best out there. Uh, uh, I'm a Tesla owner myself. I have a Model 3. As a used car manager of Infinity of Tacoma, I like Teslas, so we always have a good selection of Teslas. In fact, we probably have about 10 pre-owned ones in stock. We've had we've bought and sold hundreds over the years, many Model Xs. So here we have a 2019 Tesla Model X P100D. P stands for performance, D stands for dual electric motors. It has an electric motor in the front and has an electric motor in the back, making it all-wheel drive. Also makes it really fast because having two electric motors is like almost having like two engines. <laughs> so this thing uh, is really fast and fast. In fact, you could probably out accelerate, you know, Lamborghinis and Ferraris in this thing, Porsches. And uh, you can do it in complete luxury with three rows, uh, you know, seating, the ability to seat seven people. Um, so you might see differences in the names of different, uh, you know, Teslas like the 75 or 85 or 90. Those numbers stand uh, for the size of the batteries. So a 75 has a 75 kilowatt hour battery. This being a P100D has a 100 kilowatt hour battery. So it has a larger battery pack. And generally the uh, performance oriented ones are gonna have the largest battery packs available. 2019 is a little bit confusing because Tesla doesn't exactly have model years. They kind of uh, improve and change things as it goes along. So in 2019, uh, the P100D uh, had its name changed to the uh, Tesla Model X Performance. So the Tesla Model X Performance performance, uh, I think gained a little bit range, maybe a little bit more performance, uh, but really there's not a huge uh, difference between a you know Model X performance and a P100D in a 2019 model year. Uh, this does have some advantages, I guess, over some of the new Model Xs because Tesla did away with actually having leather interiors in their premium vehicles. They use their own proprietary synthetic leather, which is awesome. It's, it's great, but uh, some people like the feel of real leather. This has nice perforated leather interior. Um, this thing's in beautiful shape. So a lot of the information on Tesla's is gonna be on the software screen. So it has 40,064 miles. This is a clean Carfax vehicle. Um, th this one uh, has a um, adjustable suspension. Uh, so it pretty much is uh, you know, automatically adjustable. Uh, you know, maybe if you're uh, doing some light off-roading, I wouldn't do rock crawling, but this thing's perfectly capable of going like on dirt and gravel roads. Uh, but obviously in hi highway or performance driving, you might want to have it a lower setting or it can automatically adjust as well. Um, you can adjust the rate of charging on this screen um, with uh, supercharging. Uh, you can get a full charge in about a half hour to 45 minutes. Um, you have uh, cruise control, uh, uh, autopilot, which is adaptive cruise control and auto steer. That's what we call level two autonomy. Uh, allows the vehicle to brake and accelerate in its own lane and steer in its own lane. It's a godsend in uh, stop and go traffic. Um, if you drive a lot in traffic, you know, that slog of just, you know, rolling along, stopping and going, stopping and going. When you have to do that, it really kind of wears away at your soul. For the car to take that over from you, or for just, you know, driving on the highway and stuff like that, it really takes a big mental workload off of you. I'm at the point where, you know, me being exposed to Teslas, you know, so much uh, drove me to actually buy one. <laughs> and then, you know, if I have to do anything for work, you know, as a used car manager, I can drive pretty much you know, any car I want, you know, maybe if I was doing, you know, a blast around Mount Rainier National Park, maybe I'd take a performance car, but if I'm driving in the highway, driving around town, doing that stop and go slog and, you know, through Federal Way and, you know, Pacific Highway, I'm taking a Tesla of autopilot because it's the most comfortable for me and it's the least amount of work. Um, I absolutely love them. So uh, I could probably spend hours just going through all the intricacies of this car. There's a lot to talk about. Um, the screen has a lot of information, um, a lot of different settings, a uh, very highly adjustable vehicle. Uh, you have this nice uh, big screen here with uh, Google Maps with premium connectivity. You'll get a, about a 30-day trial uh, when you purchase this vehicle. They'll give you a 30-day trial, then after that it's 10 bucks a month. Money well spent having these Google Maps. You can also stream music. Uh, when the vehicle's parked, if you're at the supercharger or, or waiting while your spouse is at the grocery store or something like that, or you're shopping, you're in the car with the kids. Netflix, YouTube, Hulu's great. I was waiting to pick up my dad at the airport. I was watching YouTube. You can play video games. Uh, you can, you know, play chess. Uh-oh, I hit the uh, camera button. Okay, uh, then we have a toy box. You can, this car can do a light show. as a multi-truck recorder, sketch pad. Uh, all different Easter eggs. Like I said, I can go on and on. Um, and then a real big ace in the hole um, for Tesla, and I think this is their real uh, advantage over other EVs, is their big supercharging network. 
I, you know, I'm kind of a nerd. I watch, I like to watch a lot of uh, YouTube and uh, information on EVs. And a lot of people that have been testing EVs, a big thing that they're running into in road tripping is a lack of charging for, you know, non-Tesla brands. It's just because they're relying on third-party, you know, patchwork of charging where Tesla has its own proprietary charging, that supercharging network. Look at, there's two superchargers within six miles of us. Pretty much you can travel almost anywhere in the entire country and you can have access to supercharging. And Tesla is one of the only EVs that has a, tri a trip planner. So for instance, okay, right now we're showing about 161 miles of range and fully charged this has about a 250 mile range. So of 161 miles of range, you know, keep in mind it's not fully charged. Let's say I just wanna go for a joy ride to Spokane, Washington, all the way across the great state of Washington. Well, the trip planner will figure it out for me. Um, it will figure out, you know, where I need to stop and charge, how long I need to charge for, and it will tell me how much range I'll have left uh, by the time I get to my location. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. And the trip planner really <laughs> takes a lot of things into consideration. I think more than anyone else, it takes consideration how much tire pressure you have. It takes consideration of the ambient temperature. Temperatures can affect the range of an EV. It can take uh, elevation and change. Uh, it can take elevation in consideration. So if you're driving over a mountain pass, which you'd have to do to go to Spokane, it's gonna factor all that stuff and how much range you have. So it will make sure you have enough juice to get to where you're going. And that takes that really takes the uh, range anxiety of owning an EV is having the t the trip planner. The car has your back. It's not going to let you run out of juice. You're not going to get stranded anywhere if you plan it out with the trip planner. And uh, you know, for daily use, obviously 250 miles is plenty. And uh, your house is like the gas station. You come home, you plug it in, you wake up the next morning, and you have a full charge. Um, we have nice controls. Uh, you know, you have the uh, controls for the autopilot. We have a power adjustable steering wheel. Unlike the Model 3 and Y, which is a little bit more of a sparser interior, single screen, you have two screens with the Model X. This is more of a luxury vehicle where the Model 3 and the Model Y are like, you know, 50, 40, 50, 60,000 dollar vehicles. This was probably about $130,000 when it was brand new. So we're in a different class of vehicles with the Model X. Likely in the pre-owned market, it's not anywhere close to that. Um, so, I mean, this is definitely uh, a, a premium vehicle designed to, you know, compete with like AMG, Mercedes and all that stuff. Another thing I love is the Tesla app. You make service appointments. You can see where your vehicle is located. Well, like when my wife's driving the Tesla, I can see where she's driving, how fast she's driving, where she's navigating to. I can even see what song she's listening to on the stereo. That might be too much information for some people, but you know, I don't mind my, my wife watching me and my wife doesn't, wife doesn't mind me watching her. What I like is when I get out of the shower in the morning, I can put on the climate control. I can put on the heated seats and look at that. We have heated seats for every row. Uh, so if the car is completely, you know, frozen, uh, on a frosty day, you just put put on the climate control system and then the car will be nice and thawed out by the time you're ready to go. Uh, the climate control system is very advanced as well. We have a dog mode, so you can keep your uh, you know pet in the vehicle, keep it at a temperature. You'll have a picture of a dog on the screen saying, uh, you know, it's a comfortable 76 degrees in here. My owner will return soon, so you don't have to worry about people, um, uh, you know, smashing your windows open. Heated seats for every row of seats. Um, uh, we have heated and ventilated front seats, so they're not just heated, but they're also cooled. Then something unique with the X is uh, biodefense mode. Um, what this does is this pressurizes the cabin, so uh, no outside air will be able to come into the vehicle, except through a giant HEPA filter at the front of the vehicle. I'll turn this down so you can hear me better. This has a HEPA filter uh, about the size of one in your home HVAC system. It's bigger than, I think nine times bigger than the next biggest one in any other brand of vehicle. Uh, it can filter out, you know, pollutants, allergens, uh, you know, dirty in the air. They actually did a test where they had polluted air that could actually harm you. Uh, they had people in a, you know, bubble um, and they had uh, air monitors and breathing equipment and they put this on and it actually made it safe to take their masks off and breathe inside the vehicle. And in fact, it, it worked so good it actually started cleaning the air outside of the vehicle. So the uh, biodefense mode is no, no uh, joke. Uh, people who, uh, you know, uh, are sensitive like to smoke and forest fires, that's going to filter all that nasty stuff out of the air. So you'll have clean air in your cabin. Man, oh man, so much to talk about. And you know, the other thing too is, you know, just the performance, zero to 60 
right around three seconds, quarter mile right around 12 seconds. I think the top speed's around 150, 160 miles an hour, probably plenty fast for mo most people. Um, and then at the same time, you're not, you know, paying for gas. Uh, and you're saving money on maintenance. Uh, electric vehicles in general are going to be about half the maintenance cost of a comparable gas vehicle. Think about a high performance AMG Mercedes, you know, of a supercharged twin turbo V8. Think about the complexity of that vehicle. How many moving parts, how many, you know, emission control systems, you know, high pressure fuel pumps and emission sensors and, you know, fuel sensors and stuff like that. Think about all the complexity of the vehicle. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. Obviously, cars like that are beautiful and amazing. But when, it's, when we're talking about, you know, more things to fail, there's a lot more things to fail when you have something with thousands of moving parts versus something this with like dozens of moving parts. Electric cars are fairly simple. You have a battery pack and you have electric motors. Uh, there's not that much complexity to them. You know, the manufacturing and technology of the batteries and electric motors, that's where the complexity is. But the actual, you know, the construction of it is, you know, a lot simpler uh, than uh, a gas powered vehicle. <laughs> Good amount of space right here. So there's some different configurations of the Model uh, X. You can get a five seat configuration. You can get a six seat configuration um, with captain's chairs. This is probably the most family friendly of it, having a uh, bench seat so you can sit three across here. And then you can sit um, two across uh, here as well. And of course these uh, front seats slide forward a little bit more so you have space uh, for the third row seat custom uh, customers, occupants. Um, you can use the button here to close the doors. There's also a button there as well. Uh, the seats fold fairly flat as well for lots of cargo space. And look at this, normally there'd be a gas tank here, but look at, you have all that storage there. You can also unlock, lock the vehicle. You can remotely start the vehicle with the Tesla app. Uh, the doors are nice, you, uh, you'll see a video that I have, I just walk up to the vehicle with a key, the door senses, the car senses I'm close, the door opens, I get in, I don't have to touch anything, I sit in the seat, I touch the brake, the door closes, the car is on, I put it in drive and go, no starting it, no messing around, that's luxury right there, so <laughs> the door opens for you, and then the car, you know, you know, kind of drives itself with the, you know, the level two autonomy it offers with the autopilot. Uh-oh, they forgot to clean up here. We'll have to send that back. But look at, look at this, more storage up here. And we also uh, have a safety feature because normally if you'd have an engine in front, you have uh, you know, something that could possibly get pushed inside the engine, the, the, the cabin in a frontal collision. You have all this space here to absorb crash energy in a frontal collision. And also the weight of the batteries, uh, the batteries are very heavy. But the weight of the batteries being so low in the vehicle gives us an extremely low center of gravity. So this thing is very, very hard to roll over. Hardly any body roll. And then if it does roll over, the weight of the batteries is just going to plop it right back in its wheels. So if you look at some uh, rollover tests in YouTube, it's quite, a, quite amazing. And uh, electric cars uh, tend to do better uh, in accidents versus gas cars because uh, electric cars are generally heavier uh, versus comparable ICE cars. And it's just physics. When you have something heavier, it's just going to fare better in a collision. Just like, you know, if you're a 100 pound person and you bump into a, you know, 50 pound person versus a 300 pound person, <laughs> one's going to, you know, feel, you're going to feel a little bit more versus the other. Uh, works the same way with cars. Well, there you have it. Uh, a little overview of the Model X. Obviously, I'm very impressed by the Tesla products. I own one myself. We buy and sell lots of Teslas here at Infinity of Tacoma. We've had many Model Xs. People love them. Uh, there's nothing like it. And this is one of the few cars that actually gets better with age. Uh, with the over there updates, they're constantly improving and adding features to this vehicle. So you get an over there update, you get new features. Um, you know, sometimes issues can get fixed remotely. You have amazing, uh, you know, customer service. Uh, in fact, uh, the glove box was broken on this one. Um, I made a service appointment. I didn't have actually, I didn't actually have to take it to Tesla. I had a mobile repair person come to us. They fixed it. Uh, you know, I just had the vehicle parked out there. I just had to message him through my app. He went to the car, he fixed it and left. And, you know, I, I went out there and said hi to him, but that was about it. You know, versus going to a regular, you know, service department, you have to go wait in line. 
I was at a you know another dealership. I was just going to a dealership to pick up a car that was fixed and pay for it. But I think I was in line for 15 minutes just to pay for and pick up the vehicle. It was so busy. Uh, so if you if you don't like to wait in line, you don't have to you like to hang out in you know car service departments. You'll absolutely love uh, the mobile service. And it seems to me that uh, when you buy the premium vehicles, the S and X, they tend to reserve those mobile. Uh, service uh, people for those cars because since these are kind of more high-end expensive hundred thousand dollar cars they tend to give people uh, with those vehicles a little bit more of a cushy service versus you know the regular folks like me with the model 3 or the model y all right well there you have it thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video and have a wonderful day